Hello, my name is Anthony Kanker. I'm the Township Administrator. Welcome to Ion Plainsboro. Today we're going to be meeting, interviewing three people. Two are brand new to the township, and one has been with the town for a while. Our first guest is Brendan McIntyre. Brendan, welcome to our Thank show. You, Appreciate it. Why don't you tell the public a little bit about uh, who you are? So, uh, born and raised in Corny, New Jersey, with my wife. Um, went to Catholic school. Uh, went to college down in Virginia. Uh, when my wife and I were getting married, we transitioned down to Ocean County, where we still reside. Uh, we have an adult son named Ian, uh, who recently graduated from Manhattan College in uh, the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So uh, very proud of him. And uh, we have a nice, peaceful life. We do a lot of traveling. And now I'm uh, here in Plainsville. And how did you find your way from Kearney? Yeah, to Ocean County. So back when we initially started to think about moving, my in-laws had purchased a home on the water, and my mother-in-law became uh, sick. Nothing overly drastic, uh, but my wife wanted to be closer to her mother, and we both at that time had the flexibility from work to transition down. So we moved down there to be closer, and then, you know we haven't left. Okay, so it's been good. And I understand you have a long career in law enforcement. You were working at the state police. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that came about and, and maybe some highlights of that career? Yeah, uh, I did 25 years with the state police, retiring as captain and executive officer of our Office of Professional Standards. Uh, prior to that, when I was on the road, I worked all through South Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, during my career, I transitioned to run each of the, we had violent crime bureaus within the intelligence section. Mm -hmm. So it afforded me to work with many municipalities in every county, uh, meet a lot of great people, uh, do a lot of good community relations type uh, of work with the inner cities all throughout the state. And then when I turned uh, 55, I had my time and I left. One or two highlights in that career that come to mind immediately about um, working for the state police, anything particular? Well, there, one or two standing out, it was just the opportunity, um, depending on your assignment, you got to work with people on a federal level, mm -hmm. uh, the attorney general's office, prosecutor's offices. Uh, you met a lot of great people with the same purpose in mind to try to do everything they could to make the lives of the citizens of New Jersey better. Mm -hmm. So to try to nail down one or two, there's there's so many. Um, it was just a really rewarding career. Good, good. We have something in common because I spent 25 years in state government. I left there and I eventually came to municipal government. I understand you had a stint in municipal government and uh, any any parallels that you see between in a law enforcement capacity. But it, well, it, this is my second. Uh, Tenure as a police director. Okay. I recently did uh, two years down in in Ship Bottom. Uh, I was brought in to their chief had retired, and I was brought in to not only unlike here in Plainsboro where we've been accredited as a law enforcement agency for many years, mm -hmm. they they were not. Uh, so I was tasked with not only being uh, the coordinator for that, but to be the director and kind of run a lot of the promotional process, the new chief, new sergeants, uh, revamp the, how the department operates so that they're in, you know, doing things through best practices, which is what is happening here. Uh, kind of like the same scenario that's being played out here as okay. the chief retired, I've been brought in to kind of overhaul and look and uh, stabilize the department. Mm -hmm. And eventually uh, we'll move forward with new promotional processes for the chief and sub subsequent ranks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see what plays out after that. Yeah, well, that was my next question is, uh, you, you've had an opportunity uh, to work here for now six months. Um, and I know you're working hand in hand with the, our next person we'll be interviewing. Um, what are some of the things you two are framing as your, your major projects? And you talked about the promotional opportunity. Right. So one of the major things here, uh, that has to be addressed when you come in as a civilian police director is you have to rewrite all your policies. 
because the chain of command has changed. Uh, the officer in charge who will speak next, he takes a more active role in overseeing all the operational part, and we work in unison on the administrative and, and staffing part. Uh, we try to we wrote we wrote our rules and regs, which, as you know, haven't been done in a long time. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a pretty in depth process, right. and you know you try to chip away at all the general orders that are critical, mm -hmm. uh, so that the language is correct uh, moving forward. Right. And one of the other things that we've been really uh, working hard to do is to build our relationships uh, with the school district, with surrounding uh, police departments. Mm -hmm. uh, generating new memorandums of understanding because we're very integrated. Uh, there's a lot of different assets that are located within Plainsboro Township yep. and uh, to establish guidelines and communications uh, and just to rebuild those kind of relationships. That's that's the, been the majority of what is sounds, like, sounds like a lot. <laughs> it's it's been it's been a rewarding, uh, challenging uh, but once you, you get the right people into the room with the common goals right. and uh, willing to work together, it, in the end, it's going to make things easier mm -hmm. because you got more assets in the room, uh, different skill sets in the room. Right. Uh, you know, we've really tried to work more with uh, you know, our relationship with the prosecutor's office and the fellow chiefs association. So it, it's it, for the first five or six months, mm -hmm. uh, it's been good. What do you see in the next six months? What What are the big things you want to be able to tick off and accomplish? Well, in the next six months, uh, not only to continually develop on those relationships, but internally, uh, we're going to be starting the process for uh, the selection of a new chief, and then there'll be that transition who, whenever the mayor and council as the appropriate authorities decide who they want to name as the next chief, how that relationship builds out. And then we have a new hiring process. Uh, the selection part of it just uh, expired. So in the beginning of August, we'll start our process there, which will start with a PT test. And then- it, What does PT stand for? Physical uh, fitness test. All right. So uh, the high school has is allowing us to use their facility even though it's the summertime. Uh, we have a great relationship with the school district here. And that process, depending on the candidates, could take three, four, five months wow. um, so that we get the right person or people for the department, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward. Sounds like another challenging six months in front of you. Right, but it's, it's everything's moving forward. And my thing is always, when I went into the last department, my my goal, I've already had my career. Right. So my only goal is to make the department, in my eyes, better than when I got there. So what do you see yourself doing in the next six months? You've had a, a good five or six months to start. What do you see yourself in the so, next six months? What's what's in front of you? Well, the next, the next, the critical points, uh, not only to continue building out the relationships that we've started to redevelop uh, in the first five or six months, but mm -hmm. moving forward, working with the mayor and council on the selection of a, a, a new chief, uh, how they make that determination. And then once that determination is made, then there's not only subsequent pr promotions within the department, but we also have our new hire process. That's currently uh, the application submission part is just closed. Mm -hmm. uh, August 5th, we'll have the physical fitness test at the, at the high school. Okay. Uh, and that test will be based off what the current members of the department do twice a year based on age. Okay. So there's standards. So how many we have left after that? We'll move forward with those candidates and then we'll do the backgrounds. So depending on their skill sets and our time frame and the amount of candidates, it could be a month, it could be three or four months by the time we ensure in our minds that we have the right best candidates, best candidates to come into the department. And how many, uh, before we sign off, how, how many uh, applications you actually get just under 150 I believe okay. so uh, that's that's a pretty strong pool yeah um, as a lot of departments throughout the, the state and the country are experiencing mm -hmm. uh, especially post-COVID um, 
the applicants wanting to go into the life of law enforcement has changed. Uh, COVID has changed that with a lot of people being able to work remotely and be paid the same. Right. So the, the pool of people willing to work shift work, yeah. you know, coming out on holidays, um, it's just changed a little bit. It'll come back, but yeah. it's it's changed. It's been challenging. Yes. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, appreciate you having And uh, telling the public a little bit about who you are, and we look forward to the next six months. So do I. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Brendan. We're ready now to talk to our, our second guest, um, somebody who's been with the police department for a long time. His name is Eamon Blanchard, who happens to be a lieutenant, but he also holds the, the title of officer in charge. Eamon, welcome to Ion Plainsboro. No, thank you for having me. Why don't you talk a little bit about who you are and uh, a little bit about your experience in the Plainsboro Police Department. Okay, so I'm a uh, lifelong resident of New Jersey proud lifelong resident of New Jersey. I have a degree from, undergraduate degree from Rutgers University. I have a uh, master's degree in criminal justice from Boston University. And um, I'm a resident of Monmouth County. And I've been with the police department for almost 23 years. Uh, I've served in various roles. I've been in the patrol division. I was a detective. I served as a narcotics officer at the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. I was the traffic bureau sergeant, and now I'm the lieutenant and officer in charge of the PD. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the officer in charge title uh, and how that relates to a police director, because I, I would think the public doesn't normally hear that. They hear the title of patrolman, and a sergeant, and a lieutenant, but not an officer in charge. So the officer in charge is to support role for the director. There's various assignments within the police department that the, uh, the director is not uh, able to do by, by law. So therefore the officer in charge um, takes care of those responsibilities and also is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the police department. You know, making sure various assignments are, are conducted um, and carried out, you know, making sure the, the safety of the town is, is uh, held to the, the highest standards and that officers are conducting you know, their, their patrols and their activities on a daily basis. Okay. And having been with the department for that long, um, and I know the public and the mayor and township committee are very proud of the Plainsboro Police Department. Uh, can you tell us how, how you feel about it and how you think we're performing to protect the, the public in Plainsboro? Well, I feel great about it. I mean, we have one of the most educated and highly trained police departments you know, in the state of New Jersey, uh, our, our officers and our civilian personnel are very effective in serving the community, uh, and we have been for many, many years. We have tremendous support from our, our township colleagues. We have tremendous support from the township committee members, um, and they, that helps us to carry out our, our routine assignments and our daily assignments and, uh, you know, get the best out of, out of everybody and provide the best service to everybody who lives, works, and, and visits Plainsboro. Thank you. And when we talked to the police director, we talked about his first six months and, and the next six months. And what are you looking forward to in the next couple months going forward? What are the some big projects that you're, you're focusing on? Really, just we have numerous community programs uh, on the horizon. We have National Night Out. We have the Youth Police Academy. Uh, we have various programs that we're interacting with the school. And we continue to work with our township colleagues and recreation department and other departments throughout the town to just engage with the community as best as possible and uh, continue to keep the, the township safe um, in, in their in their day-to-day -day lives. And I know the police department is progressive with trying to educate the public about um, safety and uh, certain scams that might be going out there. Not too long ago, it was catalytic converters mm -hmm. and uh, telephone calls that were not who they said they were. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and maybe also how people can stay alerted to that fact of what you're experiencing. Where do people look for that, either through social media uh, or calling the police department? Yes, so there's a, ver a variety of, of scams and frauds that continue to plague society. Um, a lot of them originate from overseas. 
But what I always suggest and, and our, our partners in law enforcement suggest is that you continually monitor uh, your financial statements, continually monitor your credit card statements. Uh, I know it's difficult sometimes and it's tedious, but those are the things that you have to watch out for in case somebody is um, accessing your uh, accounts through various means. Um, make sure your social security number is, is stable uh, and, and protected. And also check emails. A lot of times emails are a way to for individuals to access utilizing UPS or FedEx or whatever delivery service you have. You open them up and uh, you automatically have your information taken. So make sure you're, you're studying the email and that it seems legitimate. Um, check social media for, for the information that we constantly provide on Facebook. Um, check the federal uh, law enforcement websites. They're always, they're always good at putting out various information um, about the, the numerous scams that occur because re re the reality is they're constantly evolving and we're trying to keep up uh, with the criminals who are committing these scams. Mm -hmm. So it's about educating yourself on what the current scam is and also contacting the police department. If you do have any questions, if you feel like you were defrauded in some way or you just want basic information about what the latest scam is to protect yourself. So I know of the police website, I know of the police Facebook page, and I know of Nixo. Um, people should continue to look at those pages and uh, talk about Nixo for a minute. I know that's a mechanism where we can actually broadcast to people who have signed up for that. Yes. So Nixo is a very important uh, feature we have in, in uh, you know, program we have that puts out the information instantaneously that people can get it right to their, their cell phones. As they're going about their day, there may be a situation where a road is uh, blocked or obstructed because of an accident or an emergency situation occurs that they need to be quickly informed about or an incident occurs or, you know, around the school area. Whatever the, the, um, the necessary information that we need to put out to the public, to keep them aware and informed of all the latest developments within town. So if you have the opportunity, sign up for that, that service and we'll get the information out as quickly as possible. Good. Is there anything you want to leave uh, our residents with as a closing statement about uh, policing in the future and uh, how an officer in charge looks forward to working with the residents, either with uh, meeting with homeowner association groups or churches? Yeah, I encourage every every organization, every homeowners group, um, every every uh, every outlet out there to contact the police department. We'll gladly come, provide educational seminars to whoever wants them about whatever topic related to police services we can provide. Uh, we're anxious and always grateful to interact with the community members, and we just look forward to a safe future for all Plainsboro residents and even those who live and work in Plainsboro as well. Great. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today, Lieutenant Blanchard, and uh, thank you for your service to the town. Thank you for having me. We're going to be talking to our third guest today. His name is John Cochran. He is the Human Resource Officer. And John, welcome to I Am Plainsboro. Thank you, Anthony. And you're relatively new to the organization. You've been with us, I think, since August? August, so about 10 months now. All right. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you're uh, living in the neighboring town, but tell us a little bit about who you are, where you went to school. Sure. So, like we said, my name's John. i have born and raised in New Jersey. This is actually the furthest south I've ever lived in New Jersey. I went to Ryder for my undergraduate and got my master's at Thomas Edison in public finance and administration. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you do in the human resource um, department and um, how it's so critical to department heads and, and myself. Um, tell us a little bit about that, the, the role of the human resource officer and the office itself. Sure. So human resources is really complex. There's kind of two sides facing. There's a public facing side and there's an internal facing side. So I deal with the public when people apply for jobs, when we're onboarding people. Mm -hmm. I deal with employees when they have questions about their benefits, time off, or 
general employment questions. And then I deal with department heads when they need staffing, if we have any issues with employees, or as part of the budget process. And I know you're not new to the human resources field. You've been in the public and private sector. Do you want to just briefly tell us uh, where you've been? Sure. So I've been in the private sector. I've worked for ADP and TRAIN. In the public sector, I've worked for county government. I've worked for a uh, state college. And now I work for a municipality. And um, you have some goals for 2023. What are you, what are you trying to achieve? as a support organization to the township? So one of the things I set out to do in 2023 was to make it easier to get people in. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we had a very paper-based onboarding system. We've now completely moved that to an electronic system mm -hmm. where applicants and new hires can just fill out everything via a link that comes to their phone. It's easy and it's convenient. Uh, we're also working on some internal processes to kind of or bring some order and organization to our internal structures. I want to commend you for that because that's a focus we didn't have in the past. Everything was paper-based. I think as you ramp it up, uh, people will see the benefit on the outside. Um, so what are the benefits of working for Plainsboro as, a, as an individual? So like we've talked about before, I've worked for a number of private and public organizations, and Plainsboro has been a great organization to work for. Like any public organization in New Jersey, we have great benefits. But I think more than that, you working here, you really do get a sense of the community you're serving and the people that you help on a daily basis. Uh, it's a very rewarding job. And I know you've went through a significant process in two areas. Um, one in trying to recruit public works employees, but also gearing up for summer camp and hiring a significant amount of employees. Um, was that challenging to you? And, and where do you think you landed as far as satisfying both those areas? The, the summer camp was satisfying, and I think we had a very smooth process this year because of the electronic onboarding. Mm -hmm. This has been the first time in my career that I've actually worked hiring minors. So working papers was a new experience for me. I believe there are still opportunities in the Public Works Department. You want to let the audience know that they might have family members or friends that might want to apply? Sure. So we do have some opportunities in Public Works specifically for laborers uh, and mechanics. We are really looking for people who have a CDL license. What does that stand for, CDL? Commercial driver's license. However, in this case, they're not actually commercially driving. They're operating equipment for road repair, leaf removal, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. We have worked to make the job more attractive, to better compete with some of the other organizations out there that are... From a salary perspective? From a salary perspective, and we're really highlighting the benefits that you get to. And plus, when you work for some of the other organizations, who I won't name, uh, you're really working for a big and personal organization. If you work for Plainsboro Township, you get to see and you get to interact with a lot of the people who you're helping. So you get, you get to develop those bonds. And tell me how people could find out about your vacancies in the town. So where, do you, where do they look? So we, have, we do list them on our website. They're under human resources and employment opportunities. We also post on Indeed. And sometimes we post the specialty job sites if we do have specialty jobs. But I would encourage you, if you're interested in working for the town, to go to our website and go to Employment Opportunities. Okay. Anything you want to leave our, our, our residents with as a last word? So it's been 10 months. I can really see how committed the workforce is to this town, and I'm happy to be part of it. Good. And we're happy to have you, John. Thank you thank very you. much. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on IM Plainsboro. You got a chance to meet two new he, uh, employees and also an officer in charge in the police department has been with us for 20 plus years. Thank you very much for joining us today.